Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ritual Disc Flip Podcast. I am your host, Chris Nays. I'm a music lover from St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, this is going to be sort of an improv show. The podcast I had planned for this week fell apart at the last minute. And um, I feel like I should put something out this week. I just have had a lot of stuff piling up. And this is going to be a way to expunge that and let you guys see what I'm up to. Uh, in uh, the spirit of being transparent, I want to let you guys know that I was planning on talking to Thelma Rigo, a uh, former guest on the show for the Neil Morse Band uh, album review that we did a couple months ago now. And... Yeah, we were going to talk about the two Dream Theater shows that he went to in Florida. He actually got to meet a few members of the band. And, you know, circumstances being what they are, things fell apart at the last minute. So, I hope to have him on um, and record a show later this week. We'll see if that happens or not. But, like I said, I have uh, had... A bunch of stuff going on and I've been listening to a bunch of stuff so I want to share that with you guys last week I went to FUBAR to see uh, Void Gazer and a friend of mine from high school's band uh, Devourist uh, Dan Pounds has been playing bass almost as long as I've known him and this band is definitely showing the furthest progression of um, things that he's learned over the years. So, highly recommend checking out Devourist. They have an album out, uh, and I can't for you have to excuse me. I don't remember what it's called, but it's available. So check it out. And if I'm wrong, please don't email me. <laughs> I do know that they recorded something and decided to totally get rid of it, but there is um, for sure songs on YouTube that you can listen to, like a lyric video, unless they've taken it down. I'm not going to take the time to research it in the middle of this, so th it is what it is. But uh, first time seeing them, also first time seeing Void Gazer, and um, super impressed by them. Their guitarist was like literally setting shit on fire. <laughs> Not literally. Um, I must have misspoke there. But very interesting, unique band. Uh, bass player was doing a little bit of dancing throughout the show. He's got a very interesting style. Um, they stand out among bands that I've seen in St. Louis. I have been doing a lot of reading, and uh, thanks to a uh, former guest from the Devin Townsend Empath episode, Nick Licata, he let me borrow, when, when he came over, he brought this with him. It's entitled Mean Deviation, Four Decades of Progressive Heavy Metal by Jeff Wagner. Um, I do recommend checking this out. However... I will say it kind of reads like a textbook at times. Now, um, what's great about it is it's very detailed. So they go, he goes back, all Jeff goes back to the very beginnings of prog rock and how that spawned, um, you know, all kinds of bands. Uh, a whole chapter on Rush, which I'm a huge fan of, Maiden, and then, you know, you move through the 80s to bands like Queensryche, Watchtower, of course, Dream Theater is uh, featured prominently in this. So those are sort of the three, uh, the, he titles them the big three of prog metal, and then bands spawned from that, of course, and, uh, you know, 
I'm finding a lot of information in here that I never knew. He goes, he will focus on a certain band for, let's say, like a few pages, depending on their importance to the scene overall. And then, and and what kind of impact they had. And then, you know, he'll pick out an album or two that are of of significance. And, you know, if you don't know what, what band he is talking about, then sometimes that can end up being like a little bit, well, I don't know, even know what this sounds like. So a good thing to do with a book like this is to have your cell phone or your computer handy and kind of dip into albums as you're moving through it. Now, I am only about two-thirds of the way through this book, but um, I have been sort of dropping... um, been dropping bands into my cell phone and as I can get to them I've been uh listening to stuff so let me give you some examples uh let's see here Anna Cruz's uh never heard of them before um sort of technical uh de- death metal prog metal band from St. Louis and um yeah, no, they were, you know, pretty prominent in the, excuse me, it is a lunch. It's coming back. Anna Cruces, um, you know, the, the stuff that I listened to of theirs on YouTube, um, it's, it's, I can tell that it would be good to see better to see them live than, uh, on the record. The, the records that I heard weren't of the highest, um, sonic quality. And that's, you know, sometimes it just is a matter of money. You know what I mean? So, um, but they're talented and, you know, the, the thing with, these prog, so I guess what makes uh, these bands be seen as progressive, especially at the time, is they were starting to introduce um, keyboards into their music, which before that in death metal and in prog metal uh, was very much a no-no. You were sort of seen as like, why? What are you doing? That the it just didn't make sense to do that, but. If you can introduce it in there and make it work and make it uh, interesting, then why not? You know, and that just adds another level of uh, something interesting in the music that makes it that makes it stand out from the rest. Um, today I listened to, and last night um, I listened to Nocturnus, the album Thresholds. Uh, you know, I liked it. I wouldn't say it's like the best. Um but it's sort of sci fi death metal prog. Uh lots of sci fi themes. The cover art has a spaceship with planets in the background and it's sort of like a precursor to Vector, uh with like hints of early Meshuga in there, which of course I'm a fan of. But I'll say this like there are great moments in it and good soloing and all that fun stuff, but you should just listen to Vector. <laughs> That's my opinion. Like that a Vector is a more polished version of what this band is trying to do back in the day. Um now of course I haven't listened to every album by these bands that I'm talking about, so I you know people can challenge what I say and that's totally fine. Uh another band I picked up from the Mean Deviation book is uh the band Coroner. Uh, and specifically I, I, I took a chance on this album grin and I gotta say that's maybe the best thing that I've been, uh, turned on to from this book so far. Monstrously heavy riffing on this. It is prog, but, uh, it has hints of like prong and Sepultura. Um, this band evolved from a 
sort of like more thrashy thing into uh they well okay in the book he says that they were called the rush of thrash metal i don't know if that's really the best way to describe them but they do use odd time signatures and uh you know they have a prog edge to them on grin they use some uh sampling a little bit um but yeah, I just the the drums sound wonderful. Uh I am always open to being turned on to albums that are like just a step above um the rest, the competition or whatever. Swedish metal band apparently. But yeah, I, you know, I they they have been touring a little bit. They played on the the um what do they call that? The ten, the hundred thousand tons of metal crews, or whatever the hell they call that thing. So that's a band that was recently reformed. I would like to hear uh, new stuff eventually from them, especially since I got turned on to them recently. It's like, okay, well, am I gonna get to see them live here in St. Louis? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um. What else is going on? Uh, oh, also turned on to Cynic from the book. I'd heard of them before in their album Focus, and I had listened to it a little bit before. Uh, I listened to about half of it today. I really like it. It's definitely the most prog of anything that I got to check out so far. Uh, very experimental prog stuff. I'm absolutely digging it. It's almost jazzy at times, uh, which like I don't listen to jazz really. Uh, I really I did like the Jacko documentary, so I like tried to find stuff by him, and it was more difficult than I thought it would be. I guess I could have just like looked up specific albums he's on and then look for those, but I don't know. I was in the record store. I'm like, I wonder if they have any Jacko. Oh, he is not. None of the music is listed under his name, so. Anyway, uh, Cynic had several vocal approaches, so I definitely dig that. That sort of like changes in the dynamic of what they're going for, keeps you engaged in the music, so I definitely like that. But the overall tone of it is still unified, so that's sort of like the trick, isn't it, with prog metal is like if you're gonna change up your style and um move the groove around and all that kind of stuff if it's not unified if it doesn't flow well then you got nothing at least in my estimation also like a lot of these bands that i turned on uh to just to check it out um immediately the tone for it is just not there for me Um, I'm trying to think. Pestilence, I listened, tried to listen to a couple of theirs. Um, it's a little too on the death metal side, I guess, for me. I, it just depends. I like, I like Hannibal Corpse. I really need to be in the mood for it. If I'm not, if I'm, if I'm looking for something more on the proggy edge, like I, as I obviously am, with the stuff that I'm listing off for you, um, then, you know. I'm going to turn it off, so. Fucking lunch. You know, before I started this, I was in a mood where I'm, like, super not motivated to do anything. I've been sitting here watching Dragon Ball Super episodes, and you get sucked into watching TV. And after a little while, you're like, oh, fuck, I should be doing something, you know? Especially after the pod didn't work out yesterday. But anyway. Okay, what else? I have some other stuff written down. I'm meaning to check out Dead Brain Cells. Which is supposed to be another sort of uh, sci-fi prog metal thing. Oblivion with uh, 
E-O-N at the end. Apparently that's something I need to be looking up. I want to look up more Watchtower. Uh, I want to look up a side project of Watchtower, uh, Spastic Inc. I don't feel like I've checked out enough. Fate's Warning. I should probably do that soon. So all that stuff is on my list right now. Two new things are, well, one is semi-new and one isn't. Um, okay, so I heard a band by this, I heard a song by this band, Red Death. Uh, and it, I believe the album is titled Formidable Darkness. I, that might be the song name, but it's definitely straight up thrash. Uh, and they're on the Power Trip Tour, which I think is tonight. And I'm not going to be able to go. That sucks. Um, But I really liked it. It was straight up my alley. And it's sort of like straight ahead thrash. Like a three minute thrash song. Uh, Nothing crazy complicated. Just like, you know, makes you want to bang your fist. So, look up Red Death for sure. And uh, this band Smolder is sort of like epic. Uh, doom metal, sort of priesty, uh, with mid range female vocals. Um, I believe the singer's name is Sarah. She is one of the uh, contributors to Banger TV on YouTube. Uh, my dad is calling me. Oh, I'm not gonna take it right now. Um, yeah, uh, the album is titled Times of Obscene Evil and Wild Daring, or maybe it's Time. Time of Obscene Evil and Wild Daring has a like, super epic uh, tone to it overall, and, um, you know, fantasy-themed vocals. It's a eight-song album. I haven't. I've only listened to the to the single so far, but I'm definitely buying it as soon as I'm done recording uh, recording this. <clears throat> so those are some new things. Oh, and the damn things, uh, featuring Scott Ian, and uh, I think it's Keith Buckley from Every Time I Die who sings on it. Um, looks to be pretty sweet. Um, I think. Dead Cells is the name of the single. Uh, check that out. It's River. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, you know, I'm really excited about how much new music I'm getting turned on to by m- means of this book. I'll show it off again. This is a visual podcast, by the way. I'm putting, for people who listen to the audio, you can maybe watch this entire thing on YouTube. I don't know if I'm going to put it all up or not. Mean Deviation by Jeff Wagner. It's from 2010, so it sort of cuts off um, in the history of uh, a lot of these bands that it's talking about. I know there's a section on Opeth that I'm going to get to soon. I'm in the middle of the pain of salvation stuff. Uh, I need to, I mean, like it just, it just progresses so fast through these bands, you know, every few pages he's talking about a new band. So I, there's no way I can get to them all. I'm going to (laughs) try. That's the best that I can do. Yesterday I went to the record store. Uh, we're going to, this is going to be the last section of the show. I think yesterday I went to the record store. Uh, my favorite Planet Score, same place I went for uh, Record Store Day 2019. I saw this while I was there, and I left it, and uh, thankfully nobody had bought it since I was there last, a couple weeks ago, or was that last week? I don't remember. Frank Zappa, in his own words. A uh, very short book put out by Omnibus Press. Um, it's about half photos, but, um, 
It looks to be a biography, a autobiography, and I haven't even I haven't dipped into this at all. But, um, you know, as a Zappa fan, this is like a must-have. It looks to be that way. So, um, uh, I don't know why I've never read it before. I'm certain the library probably has it, and I've. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I never read it before. Anyway, I'm excited for that. That's coming up this week. I'll let you guys know eventually when I get through it what I think of it. I haven't listened to this vinyl yet, but it's entitled Live and Heavy with a rather cheesy cover there of a man looks to be being smashed by rather small um, stacks of speakers. PA speakers. And then on the back, another cheesy of the man again holding his ears as if in pain uh, inside of a giant speaker. So strange. Um, Yeah, no, this is a compilation of live tracks. All tracks recorded live on stage. That's very... Um, that's not very much information. <laughs> but the bands and songs listed on the back here. Deep Purple, Smoking in the Water, Nazareth, Motorhead, White Line Fever, great song. Almost bought it specifically for that. Def Leppard Rocks Off, awesome. Rainbow All, all Night Long. Uh, UFO Lights Out in, on, in London. And uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid. I don't know if if that's with uh, Dio singing Paranoid or not. Because of this... Let's see what year this is from. If it even says. 1981. Very interesting. Um, I'm trying to see... If this even says... Like where exactly... These were these were recorded at it it, it it doesn't seem like it does. It looks like it's a compilation that each band contributed to. So this was not a festival. It was just a thrown together um, compilation of separate live recordings. So. I don't know what that's going to end up being like. We shall see in the near future. And I listened to this this morning, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Motorhead Bomber. Now, you may have seen that I picked up the 7-inch of Bomber, but this is the full album. And I, it seems to be a... I tried looking up some stuff about it this morning. It seems to be a re-release of the original which came out in 1979, um, 180 gram instead, which um, it does affect the overall sound quality, especially the uh, low end. Uh, it allows for deeper grooves on the vinyl itself. But yeah, it was in the shrink wrap still. Very pristine condition. Cover looks great. There's some indentations in here, some lines for some reason. I don't know what that's about. But... Dead Men Tell No Tales. Tell No Tales. Did I misspeak? I think I did. Stone Dead Forever. And Bomber, of course. And Eddie Clark sings on uh, Step Down. And that was a surprising but also awesome moment to hear that. Uh, if you can find this, it's totally worth tracking down this re-release version. And I think that's all I got, guys, for this week. If you uh, have any questions, comments, or anything, feel free to message me on the social medias at Ritual Disc Flip across all social media. Join us on Facebook in the Facebook group, Ritual Disc Flip Listeners Group. And, of course, if you uh, like the show, if you think it has value... Please retweet it, share it, 
all that fun stuff. It helps people find the show. I uh, encourage, above all else, I encourage audience interaction. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you think of the stuff that I put out there. Um, you know, I want to hear what your thoughts are on the albums that I am uh, reviewing and all that kind of stuff. Actually, on that note, I'm going to try to pull up really quickly some of the comments that I've gotten about recent uh, episodes. And let's go back just a bit to the empath. Okay, so Chris Humes commented, I went in basically blind. I have heard Strapping Young Lad in the past, but I had no idea who was in the band. I jumped headfirst into Empath within the first 10 minutes. I knew I was going to listen to it again. When it finished, I was surprised. I love it and think it ended too soon. That's interesting because it's very long. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, uh, Nick commented on the same post. It's a short 74 minutes. Because you wanted it to be longer, Chris, that just means that you liked it a lot. And, uh, and I'm sure you already knew that cause you basically just said that. <laughs> um, yeah, Chris has been saying how he's like trying to check out the stuff that, you know, we're talking about on the show, dream theater, very divisive band. Uh, if you're trying to get into Prague, I could totally understand not that not being your jam. Neil Moore, same way, totally divisive. Uh, let's go back. Chris also clarified, uh, on my last video, I was holding up a, uh, vinyl of Master of Reality. And, uh, he says that he saw a guy on YouTube who says there's around 20 different versions of Master of Reality on vinyl. So, um... Me seeing the one with white writing on it was not an illusion. <laughs> uh, sometimes, like, you think you remember stuff and you're not really sure if you do or not, so you just sort of throw it out there. Uh, Sean, former guest of the show, bragged that he has seen Devin Townsend play Ocean Machine live in Barcelona. There's a lot of levels to be jealous of there. <laughs> Uh, to be in Barcelona alone is awesome because it's so far away from us and it's just a beautiful place. Um, to see a prog metal festival there, to see him, to see Devin Townsend play that specific album live, which I also loved that record. Uh, Chris did not like it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so. I also posted a, a funny meme of a guy being looking very excited to speak in front of a crowd. And uh, it's at the bottom, it says, me when I get an opportunity to talk about Rush. So along with this, I, uh, I asked listeners what albums they think that I should talk about. Because obviously, eventually, I'm going to be talking about Rush on the show. I've already mentioned them before, but I want to dedicate an episode somehow to one record or to several records. Uh, for instance, like how they did a live record after every four. So maybe I could split them up like that. Like, and I'm putting my hand in front of the camera. Sorry about that. I can, I can take four records and sort of go through the history of those and, and highlight specific moments. But see, the problem with that is I love those records so much that I would want to spend more time with them than that. So maybe, see, I'm just workshopping things. I'm just brainstorming in front of all of you guys right now. How does it feel? I, I think I did all the plugs and stuff, but I kept the show going. I don't know what's happening right now. Um, so yeah, the, but, but to close off, I just want to say that Albert and, uh, Albert Hofster and Noah Jensen, uh, both 
posted that they uh more fans of well Albert said he's more fans of the permanent ways moving picture signals sort of run to which I replied I like all the 70s stuff too before that and Noah specifically said fly by night to hemispheres so the 70s sort of run um excluding the first album I get it guys I like all of those records I mean all of them are certainly worthy of talking about so we'll see what happens one of the people who contacted me about being on the show in the future um said he he threw out Rush as a possibility of something we're going to talk about so there's that um also, Lindsay has expressed interest, and um, in the past I've done Rush sort of centric topics uh, on my old podcast with my friend Brian. So I would like to get both of them involved if I did some Rush. Also, um, random person who messaged me who said they wanted to do it too. Gosh, I am like really struggling to get this done. It was a good idea to get this done today and to put something out there, but still, um, I'm having throat gas problems, stomach issues coming up towards the microphone where you guys don't need to, uh, have that, right? Right. So, as I said, contact me on the social medias or email me ritual disc flip at gmail.com review the show on your podcast app of choice and above all else share this video this audio whichever form that you chose to take uh this content into your body and then regurgitate it back to me tell me what you thought and uh, that's going to do it, guys. I got nothing else for you. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. See you next time. Bye.